There are a few things to learn about fur fabric. First of all, uh, they usually have a knitted backing like this one does. Sometimes you'll find one that has a, a woven backing. They tend to fray a bit more and be more difficult. But the knitted backing is quite good. It does have a little bit of stretch across the width of the roll, like that. But not as much the other way. The pile, that's the fur length, that's what it's referred to as being, the pile. Uh, it comes in different lengths. This one's quite short. It's only about one centimetre. And this one here is much longer. So it's about six or seven centimetres. Now you notice sometimes pieces come out like that. Depends on how you cut it. This one here, someone has cut it with a rotary cutter or just with scissors, I'm not quite sure which which then removes the length of the fur as you can see it's very short there where in actual fact it's quite long I'd be a bit disappointed if I bought a remnant that was done that way but you can actually salvage it you can see it's had a shape cut out there and already we're, we're just about back to the, the normal length not quite if you measure it with the ruler it's that's only back to about four where the full length is obviously much longer than shown before. Fur fabric has a selvage, same as all fabrics do. There's often holes that the machine that was used to create it would have put in there as it held the fabric and you can usually tell the difference between where it's nice and firm and where the selvage section is because it often stretches quite a lot which is, see that one's not very much there where it's nice and tight and that's a lot so you don't want to pin a pattern piece within that area, you want to keep it over here now you might be wondering why these pattern pieces only have one arrowhead rather than two generally pattern shape will have double headed uh, arrowhead like this one here and you'll position it following the grain parallel to the selvage of the fabric. Fur fabric is slightly different in that generally you only have one arrowhead and that indicates the direction that the fur strokes nicely which is that direction for that pattern piece. So for this fur here if I rub it back that way, that's obviously the wrong direction where that way is the stroke of fur direction. So for these pattern pieces, uh, I would actually need to turn them around if I was going to cut them out of this fabric, which I'm not. So the arrowhead would point the direction that the fur strokes, which is that way. That's all you need to remember. Fur strokes in one direction and position your pieces with the arrowhead following the stroke of the fur.